Welcome to Bodhi Television. We have been presenting different Buddhist leaders from different sects of Buddhism for quite some time. Today we have Honorable Abhikrit Bajra Rinpoche as our guest at the holy place of Lumbini where the Buddha was born. Welcome. Guruji. Namaste. It's been a pleasure to meet you here in this holy place. Thank you very much for accepting our request. Guruji, from your point of view, can you shed light in a very simple and easy way? What is Buddhism? When the Bhagavan Buddha attained Bodhi or enlightenment or awakening, as you like to say, um, he realized and then taught the Dharma so that everyone could be forever free from all suffering. Not through some amazing predictions of the future. Not, some, not through you know, praying to the Buddha as some god to change the world. Not through you know, any ideas uh, to, you know, of some invisible power that we have to believe in. But through awakening our innate wisdom and compassion. Just like the Buddha did himself. So the Dharma is actually for everyone, no matter who we are, you know, whatever we are, whatever race, gender, wherever we're from, whatever our background is, we're all the same in that way. Generally speaking, the Dharma means two things, the verbalized Dharma and the realized Dharma. Now the verbalized Dharma, it basically means the teachings that the Buddha gave. In one part, it talks about you know, how to, the, the best way of living in the world, the moral way that allows us to live a life without the horrible feelings of guilt, stress, pain, without creating any of them for ourselves and others. In another part, it talks about how to train the mind and how to purify the negative emotions such as anger, sadness, fear, jealousy, and so on, which are not part of our true nature. All of those things, they're like, you know, they're like temporary dark clouds that hide the sun. Yes, they're all like temporary dark clouds that hide the sun of our true nature underneath. And that's, see, that's what meditation is about. And another part, it talks about the nature of reality, the teachings that we study, uh, contemplate and meditate on to gain a deeper understanding of the truth. See, this is the thing. The truth is what sets us free. Seeing the truth directly, not, 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 not just a hunch, you know, or through blind faith, or even through being smart in the regular sense, but through awakened wisdom, you know, a, a knowing that's beyond all stains and blocks, and then, you know, we have, uh, we have awakened the Buddha within us. We have realized the Dharma. So, the Dharma means what the Buddha taught and the truth of the way things really are, which the Buddha pointed out, um, the seeing of, of which, you know, liberates us from all suffering. So, to sum it up, that's what Buddhism is. Today we have different sects in Buddhism. We yes. all take refuge in Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, but we have some subtle differences uh, among them. How do you explain the sect you are following? The Sakya tradition, yes. Um, actually, Sakya is a, you know, it's a, a special region in southern Tibet. Uh, Sakya means pale earth. Mm. It's called that because um, of an area of the earth uh, at the mount, you know, at the foot of Mount Bumburi uh, that stands out as lighter than the rest of the surrounding land. Mm. So there, it was predicted by famous Indian Buddhist saints mm. that the Trikula Nath would emanate into our world. You know, the Trikula Nath which is, you know, the means 
the Bodhisattva of Transcendental Wisdom, Manjushri, the Bodhisattva of Great Compassion, Awalagutishwara, and the Bodhisattva of Powerful Abilities, uh, Vajrapani. So, eventually, a great citadel and, uh, you know, a monastery was established there in Sakya by the members of the Kun dynasty. So the Kun dynasty is actually a Tibetan family of celestial origins who were instrumental in founding Buddhism in Tibet. So it's in that dynasty that the Trikula Nath would emanate to preserve and promulgate um, you know, a whole range of Buddha's teachings. So the first to be recognized as such an emanation was the great Sakyapa Kunga Nyimbo. Kunga Nyimbo, since his time, um, we call the tradition that he taught the Sakyapa. So the Kuen dynasty, actually the Kuen dynasty that Saji Kunga Nyimbo was born into already held early tradition of teachings. But in, in addition to that, Saji Kumanyamu became known as the one who, you know, the one who mastered the teachings of the four great translators uh, of the later transmission um, of Buddhism in Tibet. So Saji Kumanyamu passed all those teachings to his sons, and then the teachings were passed down to their nephew, the great Sakya Pandita, so who was a fully ordained monk, uh, as well as his nephew. And his main disciple, Chujal Pakpa. Uh, they were the masters who brought Buddhism to Mongolia. So, yeah, those five great masters uh, who were emanations of the Trikula Nath in the Kun dynasty are regarded as the founders of the Sakya tradition. And after their time, the Sakya tradition spread far and wide, including Nepal, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, the Kun dynasty has continued uh, with you know, lamas who are lay yogis um, in order to continue the family line, as well as lamas who are monks, who are nuns, right up to the present day. And my uh, paternal grandfather, His Holiness Jira Dachan Doje Chang, um, who was the, head, the late head lama of the Punzo Purang branch of the Kun dynasty, and uh, a renowned emanation of the Trikula Nath who taught Buddhism across the world, in particular the Sakya teachings. So that's... Okay, uh, in our sect, what's the role and significance of meditation? How do we take meditation? In which? In our sect. In the Sakya tradition? Yeah, sect. Actually, for this, you need to go a little bit on the history, yes. because Around the 7th and 8th century, the greatest of the 84 Masidas, 84 Masidas, which means the most accomplished Buddhist saints, the greatest was Virupa. Because his teachings brought together the Buddha's most crucial, most, you know, um, the special meditation instructions of the common minor teachings and the, the esoteric yoga teachings. And from then it's been passed down to master to disciple, master to disciple, all the way until eventually it was brought to Tibet. And that teaching is called the Lamje, or uh, the path that includes the result. So this special teaching became the speciality of the Sakya tradition. It includes everything, you know, from the, the Buddha's fundamental teachings on karma and rebirth, all the way up to the most sophisticated, you know, yogic methods for achieving deep transformation. But in a, you know, in a comprehensive format for effectively attaining Buddha in one lifetime. So although, you know, the Buddha gave 84,000 you know, sets of teachings um, to suit the different needs, the different inclinations of humanity, their essence, all of it, are condensed into the Lamje. That's why it's very, it's very special. And my grandfather, uh, 
His Holiness Jira Dachan Chang gave this sacred teaching in Nepal twice before. So, just to say briefly on the meditation, um, the basis of the Lamde teaching is on the three appearances we call. Uh, the first level uh, it explains about our psychology. You know, when it's stuck in uh, impure appearances, you know, the mundane mindset that is afflicted by negative emotions or karma and so on. But it presents the you know, the meditation of definitively letting go of all those blocks, all those you know negative energy that keeps us in suffering of the wheel of existence. So and then through that we reach the second stage which is uh, experiential appearance. You know the vision of experience um, for a yogi who you know who is spiritually evolving through the path of wisdom and compassion. And it presents the vital key points for that process to practice. And then through that, finally, we're presented with the teachings on pure appearance, which, you know, the, the awakened vision of Buddhahood that we are guided to, you know, to unlock through breaking down all the obscurations to Bodhi once and for all. So that is the special meditation practices we have in Sakya tradition. Uh, I'm interested in how uh, Shakyapa followers manage to harmonize or coordinate between rituals and meditation. Uh, you have all the sets, uh, sets of rituals every day. You have yes. to spend that much of time in a kind of worship, we say. And meditation, how do you manage time for both of the practices? Actually, the rituals we do practices like this, it's all together with the meditation practices, all yeah. together. So there's no difference, there's no separate from these rituals apart. You mean to say uh, we are meditating while worshipping and doing rituals? It's actually very you know, funny the word worshipping. We don't actually do Sorry. worship, you know, because the Buddha was never our God to begin with. We're doing these practices in order to, you know... The, to arouse our feelings? To arouse our own, to awaken our Buddha within. Buddhist. Bodhicitta. Uh, can you please uh, shed light on what ritual is it and why we do it? What is the objective of this thing? Commemoration to my late grandfather, His Holiness Jira Dachen Doji Chang, by a series of Dhamma practices mm -hmm. that he personally cherished. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we consider this especially meaningful because not just as a ceremonial tribute, mm -hmm. but because the practices we're doing creates positive energy for wisdom and compassion, mm -hmm. which are the essence of Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And that is the best tribute we can do to His Holiness Jirada Chandoche Chang, since, you know, he was such a champion of the Buddha's mission. So over five days, we have you know, there's so many uh, mem uh, members of the Sangha gathered here in Lumbini to recite uh, the majestic aspiration of Arya Bhadra, mm -hmm. which is the Buddha's aspiration for world peace. Mm -hmm. Also to evoke the blessings mm -hmm. of the female Buddha, Tara Devi, for our spiritual enterprise. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, to clear all our obstacles through doing what we call the Kangsu ritual. And then to meditate on the stream of blessings coming through uh, the lineage of masters through Guru Yoga. Where we can say that it is not only a tribute to a certain person or his attributes, but we are doing this also for world peace. Yes, everything. Okay. Thank you. And lastly, why did you choose Lumbini for this kind of rituals? What's the significance? What's the importance of this place? Lumbini, of course, is one of the you know, is regarded one of the four main holy sites for all Buddhists in the world. Because the Bodhisattva Gautama, who eventually became our Bhagavan Buddha, was born here in Lumbini. So we can say that the whole legend began here. 
Seriously, if there was a Hollywood movie, you know, about Lumbini, it would be called Buddha Origins. And not just that, actually, not only that. See, Lumbini is especially loved by the Sakya tradition because our late guru, His Eminence uh, Tijin Doji Chang, Joji Tijin Doji Chang, um, who founded, he founded a monastery in this sacred place and you know, presided over many large gatherings uh, over the decades for many Dharma activities that brought many people from all over Nepal, over here. Uh, in fact, you know, people from all over the world here to Lumbini. His Eminence was also one of the masters who has given the Lamdi teachings in Nepal several times before. So although it's been 10 years since uh, he's you know, passed into a final nirvana. But we still feel his blessings here with us, with the Buddha. So it's very inspiring for us to continue gathering here in Lumbini, this you know, most beautiful and sacred site in Nepal, to put the teachings that he gave us into practice. So that's why the we chose Lumbini. Okay, how do you see the development going around here? Is it, how do, what kind of feeling you get when you come? Is it going on the right track or we are doing, we are missing something when we are trying to, in the, in the name of development, we are doing something what we shouldn't do around uh, this locality, I mean. Mm. What do you feel? You are, you know, the f very fortunate to be around this place, to be able to, you know, uh, practice and meditate on bodhicitta, the place, like I said before, the place where it, everything began. Mm -hmm. To do such, you know, practices or um, tributes to gurus, uh, to do practices to awaken our own Buddha nature and so on. It's a very fortunate thing, I feel. Okay, what do you think we in the past government should do to make it even better? What are your suggestions? What are your suggestions to make it better? I would think it's good at least once a year to make a big Buddhist festival in honoring the Buddha and so on. Thank you very much Guruji for your time and your auspicious information about your Dharma, our Dharma and this auspicious place. Thank you very much. Today we had honor His Holiness Honorable Abhikrit Bajra Rinpoche as our guest. He was talking with us about Buddhism, about Sakya sect, about importance of meditation and about significance of this holy place, Lumbini, where the Buddha was born. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching Bodhi Television.